everybody welcome to my craft room I have been meaning to do this video for a long time we've been one year now in our apartment here in downtown Greenville South Carolina if you watched my last organization video it was back when we lived in Florida and we were getting ready to sell our house right when COVID hit and now uh, we moved from a 2,000 square foot home to just under a thousand square foot apartment I am lucky enough to have a full bedroom all to myself from a craft space with a nice size closet. And today I'm going to take you through every space and show you how I organize all my craft supplies, art supplies, and sewing supplies, and maybe a few other things. And although it looks like I have quite a lot of stuff still, the downsizing was tremendous. If you look back in that downsizing video, you will see. Uh, although I had a craft room, I also had the rest of the house. Lots of closet space, lots of space under the bed, lots of space in the daughter's bedroom and closet. So I am now confined to this one craft space with far less stuff, even though it does seem like a lot. Uh, I am lucky to have this own space of mine. I do share paying the rent for our apartment uh, to justify having a two-bedroom as opposed to a one-bedroom space. Uh, as long as I am continuing with my craft business, that's the way that things will go. So uh, let's take a look at everything in the room little by little, and I'll share a, a handful of tips and ideas for organization. So let's go. But real quick, this is my garage in Florida after we packed up everything in the entire house. And I promise you that probably three quarters of that is my craft room. The key here is uniform boxes, boxes with handles, good labeling system, etc. I'll share a few other things, but make sure you go back to my downsizing video to show how you go about even beginning to get rid of so much stuff, tips and ideas for downsizing your actual craft products. One of the greatest things that I discovered was to prop up my towers that are filled with craft stuff and get some of this plastic film on a roll from the local U-Haul and just start wrapping those towers instead of unpacking them. Okay, welcome to my new craft space. We just moved in yesterday and look at, look at, look at. <laughs> There's boxes everywhere, you guys. Uh, I do have my table set up, a lamp, uh, but everything really is needing to be unpacked. I did have a nice size closet when I moved here, so I've started to put my little my towers in there with all my Graphic 45 collections and my fabric and some other things here. I just, of course, have to go through everything and get it more orderly very soon, but Here's where we are. I have great three windows there on that wall. I'm gonna set up my desk with my two towers there. And I've got these two lovely cabinets I'm gonna be putting together from Target. I'll show you those when I get them put together. They have like a, a faux marble top and some cubbies. So those are gonna go under the windows over there so as not to obstruct my beautiful view. And if I could if I could see it, if I could share it, there are some mountains way out there. So, so far we're loving Greenville and just stay tuned and I'll be back when I get this in order. No place better than to start in the closet. As you can see up there, I have stowed away Christmas stuff and I have a small shelf in here from Target. This particular shelf is like shipping supplies, envelopes, bags, folders, somewhat office supply stuff uh, with a little bit other things mixed in like you can see in these bins here um, which I will talk about the bins but I do have some Graphic 45 goodies here, larger albums and things that I can't store over with my other Graphic 45. These bins are wonderful. They're clear. They're 12 by 12. They're from Doris and I use them for so many of the supplies because they're far cheaper than those iris boxes and they're super clear. They don't get frosty or dull looking. So you'll see these a lot around my craft space. 
All right, paper collections. And this is mostly Graphic 45 because that's mostly what I work with. So I use these wonderful bins from Art Bin, and I do label them on the outside according to theme and then actual paper collection. So in this travel themed box, you will see Life's a Journey and Come Away With Me and several others. Uh, that looks like World's Fair back there. So um, whatever doesn't fit doesn't get make the cut. It has to be either sold, used up, or given away. Uh, so this has been a very good system for me. And as you can see, there are some other themes with the actual paper collection names underneath. And so far, this is working well for me. And for all those little bits and charms and doodads, I use the thinner art bin compartmentalized storage system. All right, stamp sets. I love these clear bins. You can find them in Target and Walmart and every store ever. Uh, mainly meant, I think, for the refrigerator and, and storage in the kitchen. But I love to store my stamps in these. And there's different sizes, as you can see, for my different stamps. Uh, I am getting a little overflowed here with the stamps, so I'm going to have to go through these. But you can see they are categorized by brand pretty much. There's my Stampers Anonymous stamps. You saw Graphic 45 and Close to My Heart before that. And to the left of my stamps, I have the vertical paper storage for very current Graphic 45 collections at first right there. And then you'll see various other companies' papers, some patterns and solids, and some metallic or glitter cardstock back there. And then just some space here for large items. And up top here, a lot of people have these towers with the bins inside. I have turned mine on its side, which is more convenient to reach. And inside here, I keep a lot of tape runner refills, magnets, tape. Um, my Xyron refills and those types of things I don't need to get to uh, very often. Also tucked away up there that I don't need right away are some items for the retreat, some kits, and some things that I sell on Etsy. And then down here I have added this very small shelf with fabrics on little bolts, which I'll show you up close. So this shelf is very small, just got it from Target. It's only about nine inches deep. And I have all these wonderful bolts of fabric. This is the only fabric that I own. I have cut a piece of foam board 9 inches by 10 inches. You can see it in there. And I've wrapped the fabric around. I've put a little pin in the top. And it's working out beautifully. So that whole section there is just cotton fabrics. Below I have tucked my fleece and flannel and fusibles. And then on top I have just you know, smaller scraps and my tape measure. And in this great little uh, crock, I have layer cake stacks, like charm packs, they call them. And then to the right are my just a few pieces of upholstery style fabric. Okay, stepping out of the closet here, an extra tower. I have my industrial paper trimmer there. These are unfinished projects, projects that are done, holding places for things. It's just sort of a miscellaneous thing for now that I have tucked neatly behind the door. To the right is my work table, and those white bins are wonderful. They're for works in progress. And then below the table, wonderful amount of space because it's a nice tall table to have more of these towers. And of course, everything's labeled with pretty graphic 45 paper in there. This is mostly office supply kind of stuff. That's why it's on the opposing side of the table from where I stand. Uh, stuff I don't need to get to right away. So the Cricut vinyl, I don't have a ton of it, so it fits all into one bin. The transfer sheets and the few pieces of vinyl that I have sticker sheets and all that same Darius bin that I showed you earlier which fits great in these towers so you see stencils and acrylic paints and art journaling stuff and then some chipboard sheets of different colors and thicknesses and big packs of cardstock and then here is where I tuck my Cricut mats very convenient right around the corner is my Cricut here's my Cricut cart but on the Cricut cart, I have large bins on the left. These are completely filled with flowers. 
and I was very good about sorting these out by color, but as you can see, I've stuffed some on the top, which need to be organized. But basically a clear bag sorting all the reds together and maybe all the pinks together and so forth. And then to the right, I have my little Cricut book, which I keep a picture of everything that I purchase SVG wise. And then I have all these long rolls of things in the other bin. And then just some random art kind of related stuff, some ephemera and some journaling cards and my business cards. And there's that great stand I made out of recycled materials for my Cricut to sit on. So it raises it up out of that recessed part of the cart. And I have a little bin here with um, Cricut markers, blades, refills, things like that. And I even have uh, this cart on wheels so I can easily move it out if need be to clean. All right, and here's my work table, my favorite place to be every day. I have the large We Are Memory Keepers glass mat, which I love. I've got my iPad right there. And one of the best things I ever purchased were all of these little storage bins by Tonic. You see the label there. They are clipped to each other, but there's one main one back there, the largest one. And inside, uh, I have purchased just inexpensive little bins from the dollar store to keep things more contained in there because it is a wide open space inside. But everything I need that I use every single day is right there off of the table hanging off the edge. Then I have my spinner here. I have my little cubby with stamp blocks and foam tape and extra glasses and water bottles and all those good things I need to grab all the time when I'm crafting. Of course, I have my wonderful lights that have different settings and brightnesses and warm and cool tones. And I have my uh, tripod for my camera when I'm doing my Facebook Lives and YouTube videos. And under the table, it's great space, again, for extra scrap paper for stamping and whatnot. Uh, in between the towers is a great place for large cutting mats and scoreboards. And of course, in these towers, I have drawers and drawers of ribbon and twine and lace and fringe, all very organized. If you've watched any of my organization videos prior, you can see inside how those are organized. And here's just a little sample. I keep colors together, and if they aren't on a spool, then they go into a little baggie, especially small pieces. To the right of my work table is this wonderful long cart. I also got this from Michaels. And in here are all kinds of things I use every single day. I've got my little mini straightener that I straighten ribbon in that little holster carrier. I've got my heat tool. I've got all kinds of die cutting supplies here. I've got my Misty, uh, all the different plates for die cutting. I even threw some baby wipes there because I use those all the time. In the corner, I put my extra paper trimmers. And then on the second shelf are punches and extra scissors of all different kinds of punches there. And of course, everything's in its own bin. This one has my envelope punch board, but all kinds of extra tools and brayers and things such as that, an extra crocodile and my hot glue stuff back there in the corner. And then underneath, I keep magnets because they're large sheets. And this is my favorite wall. It's the bee wall. So I have some beautiful samples from friends that have made me beautiful, gorgeous cards up there. I have all kinds of little supplies here, mainly a lot of my distress inks, but tools that I use all the time, sanding blocks, the sticker maker, of course, Kermit, you saw him real quick, um, oxides, and then you will see um, pearls and gems and everything's categorized, everything's labeled. I've got my little fingertip daubers, one for oxides, one for water base, and of course I've got my little tin of mini archival inks, which are wonderful to take on the go, and then brads and eyelets and such on that left side. Okay, and turning to the right, we look outside, my beautiful view over there. I can see the pool, I can see the mountains out in the distance, and just below the window where I have good light and natural sunlight, I can match cardstock colors beautifully. So there's my scrap bin, but then here are all my 12 by 12 cardstock. 
Uh, I have now put them all together, doesn't matter what company they come from, and just sort of group them by color. And then of course I have this little bin that has random corner punches and wax paper and my heat tool. Um, a great place for things like that. And then of course we have my blending brushes which I use just for my oxides and I hope you watched the video on how I made that little holder. Then these wonderful Kelly Ray Roberts mugs which I put random things in, little tools, little pens, and then my Vagabond cutting machine and my cutting plates there. And of course I put a little trash can for all the little paper bits in the corner. Okay, this is that same cabinet. There's some tools there, some basic craft supplies in those two bins. And this bin in particular holds completed cards and some various envelopes that I've either made or collected. I don't generally make a lot of cards ahead of time. I make them as needed, but this is the place that I like to keep cards that are finished. And moving down the cabinet are all my jars of pretty buttons sorted by color and a couple other little finished notebooks and projects and some pictures, some old pictures of the family. And then down here are reference books, whether it's book binding or quilt making or whatnot, catalogs from different companies, notebooks for classes and the retreat and some other reference material to the left there. And then above some classes and courses and reference material as well and some notebooks. And further down the shelf I have my 8.5 by 11 and some 12 by 12 mixed in there cardstock. Uh, over here in this end I am keeping my Elizabeth Craft Designs paper pads and 12 by 12 collections because just below there is where I keep my Planner Essentials things that are in progress. So I keep the boxes that the actual albums come in and that's where I might throw the stamp sets I plan to use right now, uh, bits of ephemera, that, the things that have been going on or I've collected. I just kind of keep them in the box until I'm ready to make those pages. So I do have that one going and then I've got my other nature themed one going. I've got my little bin here I've showed in other videos. I have all my whole reinforcers sorted. I add and take away from there all the time. And then I have this big box where I just kind of throw extra things, things I might try out, might, might want to use later, things I've collected. So it's all just a holding place and then I have more albums back there. Okay, moving around the room to the right are my Close to My Heart stamp pads that fit beautifully in that tower. And I have bins, bins, bins. These hold my Distress sprays and some Oxide sprays and some Distress glitter. Uh, this one holds tapes of all different kinds. This one has texture paste, paints, some more stain sprays. And then down here are lots of various adhesives and my Microfine glitter. In the drawer are my alcohol inks and my embossing powders. And then down below in the door is all my Graphic 45 metal. So uh, the bottom one actually holds all the tags that I have and the top one is all the metal. Alright, and here's my nice little desk with my Macintosh computer. I've got my little rotating calendar box that we made at the retreat last year with all the months inside. I love that thing. And behind it I have just my calculator, checkbook, ruler, some pens, and desk stuff like that. Of course there's my wonderful planner. Keep extra little supplies underneath. And my little succulents made out of paper. And then I've got a bin back there I made a long time ago with some pads and checkbooks and pens. And my little fan sits right there and my pretty little lamp. And then above the desk are two no, three shelves actually, and these are all my favorite, favorite creations that I have made with Graphic 45 products and Elizabeth Crafts in some cases. So you will see them just on display here. Those are actual albums up there like scrapbooks. I love having them up there. It makes the room so happy and pretty. And the other tower to the right of my desk, up on top, I have this wonderful two-tier drawer organizer. And inside I have my 
distress crayons back there, my alcohol markers, and in this drawer, these both pull out nicely all the way out. I have my water-based markers and my Posca pens. So this thing I just found yesterday, actually, at my local Target, and I think it's wonderful. Works out great. And so there I have my colored pencils and all my paintbrushes and my little figurine, and then some fun little washi stickers. And then below, I have all my dies. These are a lot of Elizabeth Craft design dies, which I store in these zip top bags with little magnets on the back. I try to keep them in their original packaging as much as I can, and then just label them across the top. I was labeling them at the bottom, but then I found that when I was flipping through, I couldn't see them as well, so I moved that to the top. In this bin are various other companies, so maybe Lawn Fawn, just a few, and uh, My Creative Time, or just many, many different companies all mixed in. And below that, my favorite bin is the Elizabeth Craft Designs Planner Essentials bin. So as you can see here, I store all my dies in these Sizzix frosted envelopes. I have magnet sheets in there. I have everything labeled. I even have some of that um, sticky grip shelf liner stuff in the basket so these don't slide all around. It's easy to flip through and find exactly what I need. So at the beginning were the sidekick essentials and then the planner essentials and then more Christmas stuff is in the back of that bin. And then the bottom bin is also Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's the stamp sets mainly and then all the art journal themed dies, stamps, stencils are tucked in there as well. In this drawer, I keep embossing folders off to the right there, some larger Sizzix Bigs dies, some of my favorites I just can't let go of are in there. And then in the cabinet door below are some of the larger dies, uh, mainly uh, um, from Eileen Hull, but some good old Sizzix favorites from the past. And then in this bin are my Graphic 45 dies and stamps that are very recent and new. And then behind them are the very large Biggs dies from Sizzix. I like to keep the packaging from each of the dies in this clear bag. I've shown this before in some videos. That way I have a visual picture and sometimes there's instructions on the inside too. So I use them as reference when I go to use those dies. And to the right of that tower is my tiny little table that I keep my sewing machine on. I just hung this quilt that I've had forever. I made it a long time ago. And here's a little tip. I just used straight pens with a blue head that matched the, the um, binding on the quilt so you can't see it. And I just hammered them lightly into the wall. There's my little boat I just made with all my little immediate needs when I'm sewing. My little sewing machine I've had forever, longer than Jamie's been around. Little clips back there and pins and a project I'm about to work on on the left. Of my door. I have this wonderful over-the-door organizer. I have labeled each with some pretty graphic 45 paper and this is where I do folders with business stuff in it, bookkeeping, graphic 45 jobs, etc. And finally I got to hang up this art that Jamie did for me. I hung these up yesterday and I'm so happy to have them there. All right, that is my craft room, my apartment craft room. I hope you enjoyed my little tour. I hope that you were inspired by some of my organization ideas or it gives you some idea of how you might like to do things. Uh, I love my little craft space. I am actually very lucky to have a whole room. Uh, this size. I did not expect that when we moved. I wasn't sure exactly how big it would be, but it's quite sufficient and I'm not spilling over into the rest of the house at all. Everything I have is here and if it gets to be too much, then that's the key that it's time for me to purge again, use things up, and not to collect. So thank you again for watching everybody. I will see you next time in the next video. Take care.